amongst all the great venues across the entire history of the world. There's simply no other that comes even close to the importance and influence of the legendary Apollo Theater. Though most are unaware, the story of the Apollo Theater actually goes all the way back to 1914 when it was a burlesque theater. But it was closed down in 1933 and officially opened as the 125th Street Apollo Theater in 1934. The new management team of Sidney Cohen and Morris Sussman changed it to a theater that featured variety review type shows, and they attempted to largely bring in African American locals from the Harlem neighborhood. In these first few years under the new management, it was actually Clarence Robinson that introduced what was originally called Audition Night. And this featured entirely new performers, and decades later, it would become legendary under the name Amateur Night. Only a year later, though, Frank Schiffman and Leo Brecker took over the theater, and they would be the ones who operated the theater for nearly half a century. While the theater was able to bring in a handful of well-known acts during the early years, it would be this audition night that would give the world the first performances of some of its most famous artists. Most notably, on November 21st of 1937, when a then 17-year-old Ella Fitzgerald made her public debut. Her performance was so amazing that she was quickly able to get a weekly spot at the theater, and the rest, as they say, is history. Over the decades, other artists that appeared on Amateur Night were the likes of James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, The Jackson 5, Lauryn Hill, Aretha Franklin, and a massive list of other music royalty. In fact, many of these same artists used the Apollo stage to later record live albums, with the most famous being the series from James Brown, one of which I truly believe is one of the greatest live recordings in all of music history. Yet the theater was a launching pad for artists of all backgrounds and cultures, as singers like Anita O'Day and Buddy Holly both played early, important shows at the theater. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, the Apollo quickly became one of the most important musical outlets in the world. Yet with the unexpected change in culture during the 60s and 70s, the club quickly found itself in an unexpected decline in terms of both revenue and crowd size. This led to the theater being converted into a movie theater in the mid-1970s, but in 1981, the building was then purchased by Percy Sutton, and after securing state and federal historical landmark status, musical acts once again began to take the Apollo stage. In 1987, the TV show Showtime at the Apollo began its 20-year run, and its success there, along with its purchase by the state of New York, ensured that the Apollo Theater would forever hold its place as one of the most important and iconic music venues in the entire history of music. Oh!